No, I saw it. It was this little girl and her teddy bear caught everything on fire. Oh. And it's like, you're cut off, dude. Or we get Marson. Yeah. Like, yeah. Marson comes to town or something like that. He just moves the Marson town. Marson moves the pilt over. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm, I'm done. I'm getting as far away from this chick as possible. <laughs> Welcome to Casuals Room Terra episode 84. I'm your host Ryan here with your other host, Hetch. What is going on, everybody? We're back. We're back with what we promised. Some more Annie. Yeah. So as you guys have noticed at this point, we've had this cadence of doing like a bio with a story, then a bio, then a story. And we've kind of liked that. Um, we're gonna start mixing it in comics again, like we did with Nami and some other things. But let us know if you like that format of us bouncing around a little bit more to mix things in. Yeah, we, we may not listen because, again, we are really, we're enjoying this format, <laughs> but we would like your feedback. You know, and maybe it influences us. Maybe we just do it anyways. Who knows? Yeah, and how do we get that feedback? Well, housekeeping will let you know, and we always do that up top. So you can listen to us everywhere. If you're listening to us somewhere and you want to listen to us somewhere else, you can do that. Uh, you can send us an email if you want to get in contact at podcastcore at gmail.com. Uh, visit us at podcastcore.com for all of our info and then follow us on any of the platforms you prefer. Um, all of them, if you want to really help us out, helps with visibility. And if you want to leave us a review, that also helps too. Um, and then leave a like, comment, short review, like I mentioned, because uh, that helps a lot. Uh, but the best way is word of mouth is to tell a friend to burn it to the ground and rebuild by listening to the Casuals of Runeterra podcast. Alexa! Play Firestarter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're doing this story called Trouble from Annie's point of view here. And it's something we touched on during her bio. Um, but this takes place right after, right? This is very soon after the incident where, you know, we're not going to spoil it. Go listen to that episode. Yeah. Um, it's literally yeah. the last episode. Uh, like, as far as, like, to avoid spoilers, with Annie's story and the Rune Terra card game, there's clearly a lot of time in between. Yeah. Like, there's, yes. there's stuff that we don't really see, like, as far as happening there. And Trouble kind of fills in that gap. Like, we, got, we get a little bit of an idea of what life was like for Annie in between. And that's one of the reasons we want to touch on it. Yeah, that's a good point, because in the art for Annie in the card game, one thing that stands out to people is she's definitely like a young child, whereas here, she's a toddler, right? And from her story, she's a toddler. And that's kind of the Annie we knew right when the game came out. And then they changed her model, and they kind of aged up a bit as her story changed. So that it, it's, it makes a lot of sense when we talked about in the last episode, like New Mutants and Annie trying to find friends and like things that show that where we're going to see today versus where she's at in the game of Legends of Runeterra, the card yeah. game. If you want those details, though, you got to listen to the episode. Sorry. Yeah, it's not free. It's not free. Uh, I mean, it is free. And that's part of the problem. We don't charge you. So, yeah. you know what? Actually, let's just do this. All right. <laughs> All right. We do it because we love it. We'll start with part one of this story. So, we start off in a bar, and this is from the view viewpoint of a bartender named Marson. And he kind of kind of keeps himself and he talks about how he's a man who's good at keeping to himself and that keeps him out of trouble. The natural trouble that comes to a bar like this, right? Um, kind of in the middle of nowhere on the outskirts of town. Uh, some good for nothings come through there very often. So you have like cloaked figures, shady deals going wrong, the kind of stuff you expect. And we know from Annie's story that this is most likely somewhere within, if not very close to Noxus territory. Mm -hmm. So the kind of trouble that Marson is trying to keep his head down and just get skate on past is going to be really big trouble because Noxus is a unforgiving empire. Yeah, yeah. He finds it easy to keep his nose out of things. Um, so naturally... You know, you start your day at work, you're Marson, you know the lay of the land, you kind of know what to expect, no surprises. Well, there is one surprise. Suddenly a little girl skips in from the frigid cold wearing only a light dress and holding a battered toy bear. So naturally, this kind of gets your record scratch, Western style, everything stops <laughs> in the bar. But they're not looking for some big burly guy who just stumbled into town. It's this little girl and everyone's confused on what's going on. 
So she does the cutest thing. She gets on the, she st- stands on the stool. She looks at Morrison and he doesn't really have the option at this point to keep his nose out of it because he's about to serve a little girl. So he asks, what do you want? <laughs> and she asks for a bottle of Hennessy. <laughs> um, naturally. Naturally, naturally, yes. And by Hennessy, we mean milk. Yeah. That's, that, that's <laughs> What you don't know is that Hennessy is actually Elnook milk. <laughs> um, so that's... Riot told us not to let you all know that, but I think it's time. Uh, Hennessy is Elnook milk. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> but... Uh, and like one of the things here, as far as like with the her parents coming in, because we know the look of Annie really well, but she is coming in in like dress wear that isn't fitting for the season because yeah. we're in a cold season, whether it be like late fall or in the winter, and she's got a very short sleeved, uh, short sleeved dress, uh, and not really like a long kind of skirt there. And all of her clothes are frayed, like they're very well worn. So this is a beat up looking street urchin that's walking in with a big old smile, asking for a glass of milk, please. We love our street urchins here. And and, uh, (laughs) we love our street urchins. Yes. Uh, uh, But this one of the things, other things that sets Annie apart from the other street urchins is that with this disheveled look, we also see a stuffed bear. And from Marson's point of view, it's a stuffed bear once well-crafted, since well-loved. The stitching at its limbs were visible after many years of stress. Somewhere in its life, it had lost one of its button eyes. So this is the other thing that sets it apart from the street urchins. Yeah. Um, but for Marson, it's just a teddy bear at the moment. And everyone who knows Annie's story is going, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we keep it that way, right? So, uh... He's like, okay, she just wants a you know glass of milk. He can do that. He's a bartender. So he reaches over to the container with the milk, and as he's grabbing it, he notices this mountain of a man. They just says it's large m- mound of muscle covered in scars, um, whose intent is obviously that of, of a bounty hunter, <laughs> right? He just has ill intention in his mind. He's up to no good. So once he does that, Marson kind of gulps because he's like, God damn it, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> So obviously the bounty hunter kind of looks at the girl and he asks her, you know, wouldn't your parents be worrying, right? Oh, your, your parents are going to be worried sick. You're not there. And she lets them know they're dead. Uh, it's like, okay. Yeah. You know, a very light and uplifting story. Yeah. Yeah. They're dead. They're dead. Yeah. Uh, but, but she keeps saying that she's not alone. Tibbers is here with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and talking to Tibbers, like actively talking to the bear. So that's really going to help with this image of like this girl is totally all here. And Marson does the smart thing. He does the passive aggressive thing where he slams down the glass of milk. So that kind of interrupts the conversation naturally. Uh, and then she politely thanks him and plops down a surprisingly large black, a uh, bag of Noxian coins on the counter. Now, this is a problem. Because, like we mentioned, there's a bounty hunter in her face, in her grill, asking her a lot of questions about her family and what she's up to, little girl. Um, And one of the coins falls out of the bag and rolls across the table. And once again, Marston's like, well, shit, hopefully nobody sees this. He kind of claps on the side and tries to slide it back up slowly. But the guy definitely noticed the bag of coins. And immediately is like, hey, that's a mighty big purse for a mighty small girl. And, uh, uh, like, Marson is obviously kind of thinking that, you know, he's out of the woods yeah. before this happens because, hey, the parents are dead. Like, this is an orphan. No one's going to pay you for for an orphan because an orphan doesn't have anybody. But you, your paydays are suddenly back, and all that's holding you from your payday is the this little orphan. Yeah. So Marson now knows is like, ah. Yeah, no, they, they, he's going to throw down. Like, yeah, it, I, could, I could take her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's sizing up this little girl. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, for Marson, it's, you know, hey, I, I, I keep my nose clean by not getting involved in this. So yeah. he grabs one of the coins out of habit and is like, okay, well, I'm just going to leave you all to this conversation. <laughs> yeah. And the conversation goes as such. She says, you know, after you asked, you know, it's a mighty big purse. She says, Tibbers found it. The girl replied, the bounty hunter snorted. Is that so? It was on the man who stopped me in the road. <laughs> he was a real meanie. The girl took a, a sip of her milk, her attention back on her bear. That's too bad. The bounty hunter leaned in closer. 
on his stool, hand sliding towards the purse. The girl looked up at him, looked up at him, a playful smile dancing across her face. Timbers ate him. Now, <laughs> remember at this point, they have no idea who Tibbers is. <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, Tibbers is this ragged teddy bear that she keeps talking at. You know, she's yeah. a crazy little kid. Yeah, it's like we're talking about the Tibbers ate him. We see a little bear. That doesn't make any sense. Things aren't lining up. So he doesn't believe her at all. And it says, for a moment, everything stood still. Then the bounty hunter laughs, right? Kind of cutting across the room. So it was a case of where Marston didn't want anyone to get her attention or her to get anyone's attention. She got the bounty hunter's attention, and this kind of ruckus and back and forth are pulling the other guys in. Yeah, right? like They're starting she, to listen in. She, she now has basically the bar's attention, and it, I, I do like the way that it's written here, too, because it gives another feeling of like that, retro, that record scratch moment. Yeah. So you got it when she enters the bar, and now it's happening again with this little girl getting in big, burly bounty hunter's face, smiling and saying, hey, my teddy bear ate a dude. <laughs> so it, it like it, it's written really well and like i and you get that as far as like you know the the bounty hunter just starts laughing and it cuts across the whole room yeah and you know other people are going to be laughing too because it's like what is this scene that's happening like whether you saw the coins or not it's like why is this dude in this girl's face yeah <laughs> yeah um and so he plays into it after he laughs he grabs tibbers and he's saying this old thing kind of thing and that's when things shift is when he touches the bear and her voice is when it is the change. So if you've listened to our last episode, we talk about magic being portrayed as words spoken, but physically changing the atmosphere. And this is one of those moments. And we're familiar with it. They are not. Um, so she said simply, I said, let Tibbers go. Um, and this is where it gets bad. Uh, <laughs> this is this is where it gets really bad because and at this point you know marston's got the coin that he was already trying to hide away so he's grabbed got a coin he's pocketing it he's trying to get out of there he hears the let tibbers go and he's got he can sense like that he can sense that feeling in the air that difference that is being carried off of the magic powers that annie has yeah despite the fact that no one else has noticed it so he kind of freezes in his tracks for a second and then he you know starts going again because it's like what well, no i i don't it, i don't get involved this is how i stay alive uh and it's in that moment of hesitation that everything goes wrong yeah and i'm just gonna read again from this point where it talks about it so it starts with a flare of light and a burst of heat erupted from the girl. Too late, Marson threw his arms up, crying out in pain. He stumbled back, knocking into the shells behind him. Several bottles crashed around him as he ducked beneath the bar, cursing his idiotic hesitation. The screams of men and the sound of breaking wood punctuated a, growl, a growing roar of flame. A guttural, impossible sound reverberated through the air, rattling his bones. Marson crawled, still half-blinded, toward where he hoped the doors to the kitchen were. Around him, the screams heightened, then stopped with a stomach-turning crack. Now, I, dude, it's, it's one of those things where I've never been flashbanged before. Um, I've never been pepper-sprayed before. I have been to some really good haunted houses. <laughs> <laughs> where your sight's taken away from you and there's a bunch of atmospheric stuff going on but this is a whole nother level because you gotta think about it it's like you're robbed of your sight you only have what you had like the bad image you, ha you like, okay so marson is picturing what's going to happen next because he's seen a bunch of you know bad fights go wrong but he has that intu intuition right so he's picturing yeah. the worst, and that's why he's heading out to the back door. Right, right. Um, but then the thing happens, and it's so much worse than he thought it was going to be. And now he's blind, and all he can hear is sound and feel heat. And that is and, something that I just don't... And we all know what it means as far as the stomach-turning crack. Like, the screaming yeah. is being stopped because someone's neck is getting broken. Yep. Uh, so 
Yeah, no, by far so much worse than what he was ever calculating on. Because, you know, he was calculating on some poor girl getting taken advantage of by a bounty hunter. Yeah. You know, Classic, especially in these times. <laughs> in this economy. Uh, you, you take your Noxian coins and you get out. <laughs> but so, yeah, it is so much worse. So and I love like the next slide here because it's like for the second time that day, Marson forgot all his honed skills of avoiding trouble and peered <laughs> over the edge of the bar. And this is where we get, you know, just the lovely description of Tibber's holding the lifeless body yeah. of the bounty hunter, which is, it, it's so great as far as like, you know, getting a lot of details as far as like Tibbers actual appearance, because Tibbers is a cool looking monster, yeah. but it's also nice because it's like next to it is unharmed. The little girl surrounded by fire, just kind of happy. Like, you know, looking at Tibbers like, yay, Tibbers. <laughs> yeah, and this is her ability from the game that you're familiar with. Yep. Um, flame shield. Yeah, flame shield. So this takes us kind of the third part of the story where, you know, Marson is looking around the bar. He sees everything was overturned, scorched, and he kind of choking on the smell of burning wood, blood, and flesh, which that's not a cocktail I would order. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine, but <laughs> shaken, not stirred, shaken, not stirred. <laughs> but as he looks over the bar, Tibbers immediately looks at him. Cause remember Tibbers is an unnatural being, right? So right. he doesn't have eyes. He has mm. these button things <laughs> <laughs> that just and, snap to your location. And, and like, if you're perceiving anything out of these button things, what you're perceiving is just the flame, just yeah. unnatural fire. That's looking at you. Yeah. Um, as a human, I don't want unnatural fire touching me. That, that <laughs> sounds like a bad time. And the other part is just Tibber's sheer size. That in the game, I think it's harder to actually notice. But in this small wooden bar, it, he fills the room. So it's not until Annie peeks out from behind him where the guy, <laughs> Marson has a little bit of sense of, okay, I can see the girl I saw before. I knew something was up with this little girl. And when she peeks from behind him, she tells him, you know, not to worry because Tibbers likes you. And he's stunned. <laughs> he's like, you know what? All right. He's stunned. And he tells him that. And she starts skipping out of the bar through the door. And Tibbers is right. Tibbers is right behind her. Just like he follows her in the game. Uh, and she stops one last time. Thanks him again for the milk. And then she skips off into the night and then the tavern collapses in on itself. So I like to think that, you know, Marson survives. Um, this last part has kind of a uh, Looney Tunes feel to it. Yeah. Where she's skipping off and you just see the building I collapse. Mean, into I, itself. I still like the comparisons to like the old Western films because it's like the, uh, it's oh, yeah, like that feeling. Out. It's like, well, it's like that feeling of like the, you know, like the, the set falling where it's like the front of a oh. house falling. <laughs> so I like to imagine like Marson just kind of like standing where the window is. Oh, so the yeah. tavern's just falling on him, but he's fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, but like it has that vibe too with Annie walking out like, okay, see you, mister. And instead of closing the door, it's just the whole wall collapse. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's where our story ends, right? And this is one of the things where I I wonder cuz you think about like stories spreading through a land, right? And Marson from the beginning seems like somebody who would not talk about this. Like this is the type of thing that happened to him. If he survives, he thanks the graces and then he moves on with his life and he doesn't tell a soul. So the problem with that is a rumor never spreads and people never take caution. Yep. So Annie's going to go to the next place without anyone even yeah. knowing I mean, that this happened. And not only is Marcin a cautious guy, but, you know, he works uh, like he clearly works in a tavern here. So he's around people all the time. So, you know, for a fact that he's probably heard stories that are either similar to the Annie's tale yeah or a, he's heard a lot of far fetched things and it's just been like you're drunk. All mm -hmm. right. I'm cutting you off. So he knows no one's going to believe him, even if he wanted to tell anyone. Yeah. He's just going to, he is going to keep that coin. He's going to put it in the bank yeah. somewhere and just be like, I'm just going to pretend that this night never fucking happened. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely <laughs> not going to spend that coin. Because <laughs> it's going to be his lucky coin. <laughs> it's his lucky um, coin. That's going to go pass down generation yeah, to generation. Yeah, he's going to keep that coin. He's always going to keep milk on hand. <laughs> right. That's just something you learn. But yeah, this one is a fairly quick story. Um, which is a nice read because it's a it's compact, you know, it's a compact story about 
right after the events of the bio. And what's interesting, you know, talking about stories, we do know from the last episode, if you listened, um, the little things we learned through the cards in the game with the quotes about her mother, right? And how her mother was also a mysterious figure um, in that school, in the conservatory. So like I said, we'll go back down the road on that stuff because we do want to talk about the other kids and kind of our, our suspicions of what role they play. I know I've, we've pitched our New Mutants t- style um, schoolhouse rock post i don't know conservatory <laughs> destruction i don't listen we'll find Hell the key yeah. we'll find the buzzwords <laughs> yeah at some I, point. I mean like not only will we find the buzzwords but i'd like to think that you know we are going to get more stories kind of oh, expounding yeah. upon that like yeah. uh, riot clearly has put in some work because like there's enough stories and the art there just within the card game that's like yeah there's something here so I, yeah. think, I think we'll get more soon. And I was very surprised in the card game how much interest people had in Annie, not just as the card, but just in the lore aspect, because Annie, you got to remember, is an OG character. So yeah. we're talking about a decade's worth of people not having to care about her because there's other characters to care about. But everyone still knows who Annie is because she's the little, you know, little evil girl, uh, fire girl. Right. Yeah. yeah. But with this story stuff, people are now talking about her more. So that's the kind of thing Riot likes to see to decide where they want to focus. Now, I don't really have anything. Usually at the end of these bios, we like to dip back into the arcane territory because we're coming up on the next season at some point. Um, and I don't think we'll get here. I don't think we're at a point where we start dipping into Annie stuff no. or, you know, Noxian. I think the closest we'll get, like if there's any chance of Annie and Arcane is going to be like some School field kind trip in the background. Yeah, it, well, it'll be kind of like a, the Timo, like the little Timo reference they had in like the children's book. Yeah. Uh, it, oh, it, you know, yeah, yeah. it'll be something like that. You're like, you know, it'll be a drunk guy in a bar talking about like, yeah, no, I saw it. It was this little girl and her teddy bear caught everything on fire. Oh. And it's like, you're cut off, dude. Or we get Marson. Yeah. Like yeah. Marson comes to town or something like that. He just moves in the town. Marson the moves the pilt over. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm, I'm done. I'm getting as far away from this chick as possible. Smart move, Marson. Smart move move but as always uh that's it for this episode we kept this one short so as always thanks for listening we'll be back soon with the next episode take care everybody